Uh, but sharks don't have any bones. Sharks are made entirely out of cartilage, which is what our ears are made out of. If you guys squeeze your ears, you can see that's really flexible and wiggle your nose. That's really flexible. Sharks' entire bodies are made out of that. So that means they're really, really flexible animals. They uh, can wriggle themselves to get at fish that are hiding in rocks or in coral. And it also means from a snorkeler's perspective, if you grab a shark by the tail, they're flexible enough that they can turn around and bite your hand. So you should not you should not harass wild animals in general, but sharks in particular. And also our but our arms are much more flexible than theirs. We have joints in our arms. Uh, shark fins, the pectoral fins, the ones up, out front there are very rigid. They can't move them at all. Uh, sharks have gills. We have lungs. But the, a lot of the differences are things that are true of other fish as well. What is the most abundant kind of shark? The most abundant kind of shark. Well, a hundred years ago, that would have probably been the blue shark. Uh, but those guys, sharks are, a lot of species of sharks are in big trouble around the world. Uh, blue shark populations have declined about 97% in the last 50 years. Uh, to put that into perspective, manatee populations, which most people think of as one of the more endangered species of animals that live in the water, uh, they've declined about 30% in the last 100 years. Blue sharks, uh, what happens to them is they they roam the open ocean. These are the guys that the ancient sailors used to see following their boats, eating trash and stuff. Uh, blue sharks get caught in fishing nets. And when they get shark, a lot of sharks need to keep swimming in order to breed. And when they get caught in fishing nets, they just can't breathe anymore and they suffocate. So blue shark populations have dwindled a lot. Nowadays, one of the more common species is probably at least the most common species that we have around here in Charleston. And I know it's, I know that they're around where you guys are too. Is the Atlantic sharp nose shark? A big Atlantic sharp nose shark is probably three or four feet long. They're a very small animal, but that means that unlike most species of sharks, they can have lots of babies. They can uh, reproduce when they're relatively young. Other species have to wait until they get very big before they can reproduce, and that means there aren't going to be very many of them. But Atlantic sharp nose sharks, we've had days where we go out uh, sampling and we put out 100 hooks and 85 of them we catch Atlantic sharp nose sharks on. So they're very common. They are definitely not, but many species are. Tom, um, do you study in like a specific kind of species of shark, or do you like study do. Um, sharks in general? I study I study sandbar sharks. My particular research deals with sandbar sharks. Uh, they are another fairly common species, but they've had some big population issues in the, in the last few decades as well. They've declined about 70% in the last 50 years, the United States populations of sandbar sharks. Uh, they are one of the few species of sharks that people actually eat. Uh, most shark meat is not very good, but sandbar, sandbar shark is very good, so about about uh, three quarters of the United States commercial shark market is sandbar shark. So they are uh, they are fished pretty heavily. And I study them. I'm trying to figure out what they eat, which is something that we don't know. Something as basic as what these animals eat. We scientists have no idea. If any of you guys watch Shark Week, they always start with, we know so little about these animals. It's really true. Uh, they're, they're relatively hard to study, and there are relatively few of them which means we know very little about them. So as, as a project like mine, if you were going to do, uh, if you were going to try to study uh, what a common bony fish species eat, people would laugh at you because we knew that 100, 150 years ago. But shark science is really far behind because the animals are harder to study. But I study sandbar sharks and I'm trying to figure out what they're eating. Once we know what they're eating, we can better protect them because we can protect the uh, prey species that are important to them as well. John, um, that, earlier you mentioned a pink shark sighted off the coast. That are sighted off the coast of, of Japan. Is that the goblin yeah. shark? Hey, what, sorry? Um, the the goblin shark. Is that the pink shark? Yes, that's a goblin shark. They can be they can be bright pink. <laughs> that's cool. What makes them pink? Uh, they. I'm not exactly sure. They live in relatively deep water. And a lot of times that live in deep water are red because as you move down, uh, as you go deeper and deeper, different colors disappear in the order of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, the red, orange, yellow, all that. 
So red is the first to disappear. So anything that has red color, if it lives in relatively deep water, it's going to appear black, or and sometimes it almost looks invisible. But uh, why it's pink, I'm not exactly sure. Right. But it probably has something to do with that, or with camouflage. There's a lot of corals that are pink. Uh, some algae species are pink. But it's really weird. <laughs> Is it true if you punch a shark straight in the eye that it will go away? Nose, sorry. Well, I hopefully none of you guys uh, get. Hopefully none of you guys are, are into the punching in general. But I, what I always what I always tell my friends who ask me that question is, if you punch me, I'm going to punch you back. I'm not going to run away. And the same thing is true of, of sharks. You're just basically going to make it angry if you punch it. And if you've ever tried punching underwater. It doesn't work very well. You move very slowly. So uh, the, the best thing to do is uh, probably poke it in the eye, which was the first thing that you said. Any animal, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's a, a rabbit dog or if it's a shark or if it's a, anything like that, a lion. If you punch it, you're probably not going to get it away from you. But if you poke something in the eye, it's going to stop what it's doing. Have you ever been bitten by a shark? I have never been bitten by a shark. Uh, I got, last summer, my my dad came out uh, sampling, catching sharks with me for the first time. For years and years, I've been telling him, no dad, I know you wanted me to be a doctor, but this really isn't that much more dangerous. And he came out with me the first time, <coughs> excuse me, he came out with me for the first time last summer, and I ended up putting a shark hook through my hand. Uh, and the hooks that you use to catch sharks are significantly bigger than hooks that you use to catch the fish that you guys might be used to fishing for up in New York. So I was not bitten by a shark, but my dad still had to take me to the emergency room. He was, he was not really forgiving me for that. <laughs> but I've never been bitten, no. Joe, how big is the biggest shark you ever seen? The biggest shark I've ever seen? Uh, the biggest shark I've ever seen was probably at the Georgia Aquarium. They have whale sharks, which are right. They are the largest species of fish that is alive right now. Uh, megalodons were larger, but they're extinct. Uh, a big whale shark, a full-grown whale shark, is going to be about the size of a regular school bus, uh, 45, 50 feet. But the ones at the Georgia Aquarium are approximately. Um, 25 feet or so. It's still a very big, very impressive air. In the water width was 13 feet, and that is that's plenty big if you're in the water with it. Mm -hmm. Brian, can we see your scar on the hand from the hook? <laughs> it, does, it probably won't even show up. I, mean, I can try, but it's, no, no, right? it's too shadowy. Uh, no, you can. Oh, I saw, I saw. <laughs> I saw it. Uh, yeah, it, there's not there's not much there. The doctor did a very good job. David, could you talk to us about some of the threats that sharks are facing worldwide? Uh, I mentioned one of them, that the blue sharks get caught in fishing nets. Uh, that, that's actually a problem facing a lot of sharks around the world. It's a problem called bycatch. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that word, but are, are any of you guys, do any of you guys go fishing with your families or friends? Okay. A couple hands. When you do that, you take a fishing rod and reel and you catch one fish at a time. And if it's not what you want, you throw it back. And there's a lot of rules about what you can catch. If species are above a certain size, or if they're too small, or if there's some species that you're not allowed to catch at all, or there's some species that you can't catch in the summertime, there's all these rules. And that's to make sure that there's enough of those fish left so that they can produce the big fish next year for more fishermen. Uh, but commercial fishing, people that go out to catch enough food for the seafood industry, they can't do that. Uh, catching fish one at a time just doesn't make any economic sense. So they use the commercial fishing gear is miles and miles long. The nets that they use to catch tuna can be eight miles across. The uh, the giant nets that they use to catch shrimp, and you can fit five 747s stacked end to end inside of them. These are big, big nets. So what that means is there's no way that you're only going to catch the species of fish that you're trying to catch. You're also going to catch fish that happen to be swimming near those fish. Uh, and sharks.